So we're going to talk about bow changes, how to make nice smooth bow changes. So um, if let's use the analogy of a car. So let's say you're driving a car and you're going in one direction and you want to come back in this direction. Do you drive a car yet? A little bit. A little bit, okay. So you're driving in this direction and you want to come the other way. What do you do? You put on the brakes and you go in reverse. Okay, so you could do that and go in reverse. Well, the analogy for that would be that we're having to stop the bow and restart, which means you have basically you're stopping the vibrations from going and to make a nice smooth bow change you really just need to try to keep those vibrations really going. So how else can you go from that direction to this direction in driving without actually stopping, put on, putting on the brake and stopping and backing up? You could do a U-turn. A U-turn, okay, so great. So you could go in a little formation like that and make a circle, okay? So what we need to look for is how we can make a similar kind of a circular motion here on the cello. How, how can we do that on the cello for the bow changes? Well, you could do that on one side of the string for a down bow and then another side of the string for a Okay, bow. we've done, I think, a little bit of that in the past, maybe in the cello class or something. Uh, so as you go from one side of the string to the other side, you have the C string side of the, of the G string and the D string side of the uh, G string. So which one are you going to use, like, on the up bow? You're going to use the C string side. Okay, so you go to the C string side on the up bow and then the D string side. And you let the fingers do that kind of motion. Okay, try that. Great. Good. And along with that, what has to happen with the... You want to keep the vibrations going. So what happens to the weight? You need to let off some of the weight. Right, right. So basically, you know, if I did an up bow... I just go into the air, the vibrations continue, and I get that. If I can catch that on the down bow, the vibrations are pretty much continue. Well, we can't really do that for bow changes, but what we can do is lighten up so that we're not interfering by weight, interfering with the vibration of the string. So um, put that together, that concept together now with the side of the string, so on the up bow, on the C string side, and lighten up a little as you do the down bow. is the upper arm is going in this direction and then as you're turning around your upper arm is going in that direction and your wrist is still going in that direction so it's going like this I don't know if you can see slow motion would be upper arm is going this way upper arm starts going the other way and the wrist is going that way so it's a little the wrist is a little behind in a sense and you go how much of the release of the weight and how much is the bow speed. You have to be a little careful with this, but you could, another thing, trick you can do is a little faster bow speed on the up bow to keep the vibrations kind of going, but you have to be very careful with the speed. So you have weight and speed that you can still play with and the sides of the strings, okay? So try one more time, just, just listen to your own bow changes here. Watching, right? Little finger, sorry. The little I was finger. Thinking. Yeah, those are the things I'm looking for. harder to put in weight, so that makes it actually easier to do some of these bow changes on the tip here, right? Okay, so now let's take a down bow on the G string, 